in a previous video, I showed how to change the uh, image file in an image view or change the image resource of an image view. And I had used a large switch statement, or Kotlin calls it a when statement, and I sort of found that a little distasteful. So I wanted to have a slightly improved version, and I'll probably have an even more improved version later. So I want to get rid of that when, that's my purpose here. So this code can be found at the URL seen here. So the app looks mostly the same. Here's the AVD, one chooses a dog and it is showing, we had, there's a border collie and I am changing the picture to the picture of a border collie. And I'm also displaying the colors of the, the border collie might be found in. So here's a box or a fawn and brindle. Okay, so let's look at first the activity main, not much to this. The image view uh, content description is a property that they sort of push you to have these days for uh, accessibility. Um, they like if you have a text view saying and is serving as a label. So this text view just says uh, select a breed of dog. So it's related to the spinner where they, the user will what the user will use to choose the dog. So another uh, label for is another accessibility uh, attribute that they're asking you to use these days. Here's the spinner, which is the, I'll call it a drop down list where the user will choose the dog. And then here's the text view for displaying the, the colors that the dog uh, comes in. Okay, again, so I'm not, uh, I'm working here with just resource arrays. So I have sort of parallel arrays. Uh, again, promise we'll do better in the future, sort of have objects or something, but for now, parallel arrays of dog names and dog colors. So the, the border collie, which was the last one is black and white, the beagle, which is black and tan. So they are there's a correspondence based on positioning shared indices. Here in my drawable file are the dog files, uh, Alaskan underscore malamute.jpg. So we have to obey a fairly strict a naming scheme here. No capital letters, no spaces, small letters, underscores, and numbers are allowed, though I'm not using any numbers. If you use numbers, don't start with them. When I access the resource, I will not include the file extension. So you'll see no JPEGs when I'm making the encode, when I'm making the connection to this uh, drawable resource. Okay, we move over now to the main activity. So up here sort of collapsed are all the various imports that I need. I am bringing over the dog colors array from the resource array. So I'm making a code version of that array here. So resources get string array and then use the uh, r.array.dogcolors. So code version of the resource array. Make a code version of the text view in the interface. Make a image view code image view to correspond to the image view in the interface. And same thing for the spinner, use an array adapter. We're working with a resource array, so create from resource. And there is r.array.dogs, that is the array over in resources that we are using to populate the spinner. Line 26 finally populates the spinner. And here's our uh, spinner handler so when the when an item is selected there are two methods one down here is when nothing is selected sorry sorry lights on a timer went out of me all right so the image selected uh, handler uh, 
again, in a drop down, these individual dogs are in uh, views, and that is one of the things that comes in with this method is the view, and another one is the index. Uh, I'll call it the index, the sort of position starting at zero. I'm going to take that view then comes in, cast it as a text view, get its text, display that in a toast. I'm grabbing that same information, and we're gonna call it the drawable resource name. It's the name of my drawable resource, almost. This is the name of the dog. And so let's say Border Collie would have a capital uh, B and a space and a capital C. So I had to do some string manipulation to get it into the proper uh, name over here. So here is the line of code for putting it into lowercase. And here's the line of code for getting rid of any spaces and replacing them with underscores. So now I have the name of the resource. Now the resources really work with IDs. And so this line here, 41 on down, is to get the ID, the behind the scenes thing based on the name. So I'm going to the resources, which belong to the context. I'm getting an ID, I'm getting an identifier. Based on that name of the dog I just made, border underscore collie. What kind of resource is it? It's a trouble resource. And where am I looking? I'm looking in the, the current package. So the package defines for me a namespace where, and so that's where I look for this name. And then when I have that ID, then I can set the image of the dog. I can use that I, which is the index that this method comes with, and use my dog underscore colors array that I made of from the resource array. So this is a code array made from the resource array, and I use that to set the text of the text view dog color. Here I am, when the app starts, I am choosing a random dog. So I'm here's my range. Here's my dog array. So I'm going to the resources, getting the string array for the for the dog's array, finding its size and subtracting one. So zero to that. That is the possible span of indices. And then I'm getting a random one of those. And so that's, I call that random index. So if I have 10 dogs, there is zero through nine, and I'm picking one of the numbers between zero and nine, pseudo randomly. And then I'm using the set selection method of the spinner to choose a random dog. So if I stop the app and start it again, it's picking a dog at random. This time it chose Border Collie. If I stop it and start it again, this time it chose a Dachshund and so on. That's what I wanted to show you, thank you.